Unfortunately, my experience going through the conventional medical system was one of the reasons I decided not to become a typical physician and go to traditional medical school. And it's unfortunate, but as the years go on in this modern era, fewer and fewer people are trusting their doctors, which on some levels really bad news because they're not taking their advice, even when maybe they should go the conventional route. But in this video, I wanna share a few things that I wish every physician knew. Now, maybe you're a person who's also trying to heal yourself watching this. Maybe you are a practitioner. But these are things that I wish every healer of some kind practiced. Hey, I'm Alex Hine, author of the health bestseller, Master the Day. Now, I've included the first link below is for a free download. Five daily rituals to potentially help you add 10 years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. You can check it out right there, the first link in the description. The first thing is that I wish every physician treated their patients as their own child or their own mother. You know, there's this one physician that I was reading about, and he said that in Japan, with the specific sect of physicians, I think there were Chinese medicine doctors, the highest level of physician is the one who counsels the patient on how to live his or her life. And I love this idea of the physician being the trusted advisor. We're on the same team. Come sit beside me. Let's discuss what needs to get better. And yet so often what I see is the exact opposite. You know, imagine if Merlin and the Knights of the Round Table or whoever was the teacher to Alexander the Great, Socrates or Aristotle, imagine rather than being like, this is what we need to do. How are you feeling? What's going on? An actual dialogue. Rather than that, what I see so many physicians do is this belief that I am the God. I have the knowledge. I know what to do. I am saving your life. So don't you dare be an idiot and not listen to what I have to say. You're dumb. I'm the highly trained one. Listen to me. This isn't a discussion. It's like a parent talking to their kid being like, you're stupid. I know everything. You're grounded. Go the hell home. The problem is when people come to you looking to be healed, all of us are scared. All of us are the scared little kid that just scraped his knee, wondering if he's gonna be okay, looking up to daddy or mommy for the validation. Is daddy, mommy worried? Or are they like, you're gonna be fine, don't worry. And yet so many physicians do not do this in their practice. There's this cult of, I, the God complex, I am the all beer, the all doer, the all knower. You should listen to me or else piss off. When a physician or the healer doesn't act like the trusted advisor and listen, when the healer, the advisor, the person who has the power is not saying, tell me what you're feeling, tell me what's going on, and then we can have a discussion and I can share what I know works clinically, and if you have a different thing you wanna try, that's fine too. I'm not here how to tell you how to live your life or tell you what to do. You don't have to do what I'm saying. When that happens, a deep level of rapport and trust is built. And ironically, a patient is more likely to take your advice when they feel like they're listened to and less likely to sue you. And on top of that, it's just being a good human being when you say, come sit beside me, things are gonna be fine, let's discuss what's going on, I know you're scared, let's talk about this a bit. The second thing is I wish all physicians knew that every patient coming in on some level is afraid. That's it. I wish every physician remembered the person coming in is the little boy or the little girl just scraped their knee and they're scared. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what's gonna happen. They don't know if what's happening is life-threatening or it's just a headache. We don't know. And as a result, there's this fear there and there's it's easy to become manipulated or controlled or told what to do. You know, Bernie Siegel in his book, Love, Medicine and Miracles, talked about this interaction with a patient and I believe her oncologist or her surgeon and the patient was saying that they wanted to do some integrative therapies as part of their either chemotherapy or before going to surgery. And the patient was actually arguing with the physician saying, I would like to do this, here's some research on this. The physician didn't want to hear any of it. And he actually yelled in the patient's face and said, there'll only be one fucking cook in this kitchen. Now, can you imagine, can you imagine the little girl, the little boy, tummy ache comes up and says, dad, you know, I don't, I don't feel that well. And the dad says, here, I want you to take this Pepto-Bismol. And the little girl or little boy is like, but why am I gonna take that? Like, I don't, I don't really know, it looks weird, it's bright pink. Uh, is that gonna make me sicker? And the dad or the mom, instead of saying, it's okay, just take this, you'll feel better, you don't have to take it if you don't want to. 
Imagine if the dad said, shut the hell up, take this and go to your damn room and slam and close the door. <laughs> it's nonsensical, right? And yet there are a lot of practitioners that do exactly that. When a patient comes in seeking your advice, you are the powerful one. You have the solution on some level. Rather than saying, I know it's scary, this is what we would do to treat it. You don't have to take my advice, but if you don't want my advice, don't come see me. And yet so many will say, if you don't do this, you're gonna die and you have two months to live. Can you ever imagine saying that to a, a human being that's your family or your friend or your kid? So why say that to your patient? You know, and what if that, just that interaction you have is more damaging and builds more ill will and that bitter taste in the mouth and that hatred of doctors and that hatred of the establishment more so than the medicine you give that patient that could help them. You know, in my mind, any healthcare practitioner that a person that's ill comes to for healing, their job is to say, this is what I would do. And if you come see me, this is what we're going to do. I'm not saying I have the be all, the end all. I'm not saying I have all the answers, but this is based on my experience and the clinical research, what the outcome typically is. You can take it or leave it. Rather than the God complex, do this or you're going to die. Now, maybe these are pipe dreams. Maybe these are the ramblings of an old alchemist, <laughs> a philosopher. But I think for the healthcare practitioners, especially the ones that do have the power to help somebody, acting as the trusted advisor, the parent, making your patients feel safe, allows them to trust you and to take your advice rather than viewing you as the enemy or as someone they don't trust. Because there's not a two-way street, there's not a discussion. There's clearly no listening happening. In my mind, as the healer, whatever mode, it's your job to merely say, this is what I can do for you. It's up to you whether or not to take it. And if you come, this is what we'll do. And not to tell a patient how to live their life, not to come in and think, I know how to tell them what to do, but merely to share my own experience, clinical experience, and the research that I've seen work. And I think if healthcare practitioners, especially physicians and surgeons, could really get behind this and understand this, there would be a big difference in patient outcomes. All right, my impassioned rant for the day. But I mean, I had a very frustrating time going through conventional care and it soured me enough that I didn't go into conventional medicine specifically for that reason. And I had a lot of great doctors and specialists that I loved, but there was enough consistently that I didn't like that I knew I didn't want to be around that all day. And I sure as hell did not want to become that. So just my two cents. Of course, if you'd like to stay in touch, grab the free download there below, five daily rituals that can possibly help you add 10 years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. And then before you go, check out this related video right on this topic, right on over here.